Alright guys, here we are again with the third part of our um, office stationery or business stationery setup. First we had the letterhead, followed by the business card, or actually the other way around, business card, letterhead, and now a compliment slip. And the compliment slip is quite easy really, it's just, think of it as a piece of paper, I'm sure you've all seen them. Now what we've got on the screen here is... Um, the presets, you go to presets, file new of course, file new, and you can see there's another document in the background there I was working on, but we have file new and the presets dimension lengthwise. Now we don't want it portrait, we want orientation is landscape. Number of pages one, any documents, um, place you can place them linked or place them embedded. So let's place them linked. That seems to be the norm for this exercise. CMYK colours and include margins. Now I've got margins on here, but the document doesn't talk about them. So we'll talk, take them off. I often like to put margins on so I can see what I'm doing. But simple as, let's just create the document. And there we go. There's our blank document to start with. Now we're going to put a grid on this, um, a very faint grid, so that the, the complement slip, which I might add is only fairly small. Let's go up there and select that. Put that there. Now what I might do is actually turn on the pointer. So you can see what's happening. Let's go to Finder. I'll have a quick look over here off the screen for a moment. Go to Applications. And of course, nothing's really happening at the moment. I've got too much happening, I think, and it's, um, it's gone away on me. Pointer Pro. There we go. Pointer Pro's up the top. Turn the arrow on. And there we go. Now we've got an arrow. After all that, well, what we're going to do now is turn on the grid. Create a custom grid design for the background of the slip. This can be done fairly easily by setting up a grid for our document and then tracing over it using the pen tool. So let's set up a grid. There's our snapping manager up there. But first, go to View and Show Grid. Oops, we don't want Finder. We want that. View. Click on Show Grid. And there's a grid there already. On the toolbar, click the down arrow on the snapping icon and ensure Enable Snapping and Snap to Grid is checked. Now there's our little down arrow there. Enable Snapping and Snap to Grid. There we go. They're both on. Now, setting up the grid. In the View menu, up here, go to Grid and Axis Manager. And we don't have a preset there yet. But in the preset pop-up menu, select the one centimetre square grid. One centimetre square grid. There we go. You can see that's immediately changed on the screen. Increase the grid spacing to 11 millimetres. The spacing just there. Let's make that 11 millimetres. Slightly bigger. This gives a 9 row grid that fits perfectly into the 99mm document height. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Too easy. Close that. Now, what's the next step? The next step is making the grid. And we'll do that shortly.
Now let's continue right along with the grid and we're going to draw lines over the established grid. You can see here we, we're going to make a, a vague or very faint background grid that you can actually see on the paper. So to do that let's select the pen tool right there and that comes out there to the dot. Now I've got it the stroke is black and the point is two points so we can see the line. Take that right down to the bottom there. Hold the command key. Whoops. Oh, and I've managed to tilt the thing. Rotate. Reset rotation. Of course I don't want it rotated. Now that line goes from there to the bottom. Now what I want to do is go to the Move tool, select that line, hold the Command key or Control again, move it across so it snaps to that line, let it go, hold the Command key again, let it go, hold the Command key again, let it go. Now we do this all the way across. Right across to there, one, two, three, four from the edge, command key, right across, right across, right across to there. I could probably select all of those and move them all at once, but that can get confusing, so you have to be careful doing that because they will sit on top of each other and you'll end up with multiple lines, but for this exercise, I've only got to be one, two, three from the edge. One, two, three. One, two, three. And there's a little space there. Just ignore that for the moment. Now we go back here. Oh, this magic mouse can be a pain. Now repeat the process for the horizontal lines. Pen tool selected, two points, one at the top. Click there, go right across to there. Hold the command key down and press enter on your key. Go and select the move tool. Select the line, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Now we're leaving that space there to put text and things in. Now we've got to tweak the custom grid. We want our completed grid design to be branded and made less visible so it doesn't clash with messages written on the complement slip. Now if you were to write something on there you wouldn't be able to see it, obviously. Now what we've got to do is go to the menu and select, select all and that's got all of them. You can see them in the layers panel over here. They're all selected. And in the swatches panel, ensure the stroke color selector is active and apply the blue global color. Swatches. Now what we haven't got in, the, in there yet is our swatches. Nope, I didn't put it in there yet. That's okay. We go up here, import a palette as document palette. Now it's going to go and find. No, I didn't import that, did I? So just give that a moment, the bouncing ball. As I say, this computer is actually doing something quite intensive at the same time, which I probably shouldn't be doing. But there you go. 
some downloads. And it's if I remember correctly, it's there. Double click. There's our swatches palette. Okay, so let's open that. And there it is there, KBA Global Swatches. Now with that selected, with the stroke panel, change the stroke width to point 0.2 points. Right, before we do that, let's apply the colour. There we go. Believe it or not, those lines have changed to blue. Because that's the global colour that we selected just there. Now we've got to go back to the pen tool and set that to point 0 0.2. Zero point two points, and that's very thin. That's what you want. And drop the opacity. Go to the layers panel, and the opacity is a hundred percent. We've got to drop the opacity to twenty percent. There we go, twenty percent. So those lines are now very faint. If you were to print them out you would actually be able to see them. One of these days I'm going to get rid of this magic mouse, it's a pain. Now if I go up here to select, I can deselect everything. There we go. Now you can't see the lines, but they are there. Very faintly. Now that's that for that bit. The next bit we've got is putting in the text. Now we're going to add the text. The complement slip um, copy, it should be set to a small size and kept simple, being mindful of the page edges and overall legibility. Our text should not be too large and distracting or too small to read properly. There should also be ample space on the slip to include a message, which is what this is all about. So let's just add a salutation text and company address. With the frame text tool active, frame text tool there, active, set your preferred set text settings on the context toolbar. Now I'm going to go down here and add the AB. What did we call that one? You know, I can't remember it. Let's go find it. Downloads. C-H-I-V-O. There we go. Shivo. Now, do we want bold? Let's make it Shivo bold. And 12 points is probably a little small. Let's just make it 14. Now, we'll go over here to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. About the fifth point up, I would think. And... Let's see. Eleven, eight point eight, seven point three, eight point eight. There's eight. The height. Three. 
three eighths of twenty four, four eighths of thirty two. Can we get the thirty two, thirty one, thirty two? There we go. Now, why have I been so painstaking with that? Because I'm trying to work to an eight point grid with this. And you'll see a video on that coming up soon. Now, drag a small text frame out in the center of the blank area to the right of your page and type your salutation text into the text frame. And that's going to be with compliments and it's way too big maybe we don't want bold just go for regular and I know it's twelve points yeah the bulb was too big with compliments We can make that possibly a little wider width. 40. 5 eighths of 40. And there we go. The trouble is, we've now got to move that. This is alright, this is part of your design. And that's 4. You see that's half an 8 point setup. Now, I want to move that outside there. Because that's a group. That's the grid lines. Let me show you those lines. There they all are. And we've got our complement slip just there. It's four points away from that. And possibly, hmm, I don't know one or maybe two away from the side but they're fractions of the eight point curve now at the eight point system now I've got all those grid lines in a group and you can see the group is there with complements now with our we've got to put the address down there so copy that one, copy, control, command V and command, bring that down so it's level with the bottom one, and in here we'll put A O E S T N E R. Crossing the brown. You can see this only needs really small lettering, so 12 point is too big. Yeah, 8 points. Costner Brown Architects. Shift enter one Wilford Rise N O double T I N G H A M Nottingham N G thirty seven space one A D. Now that we've got that there. Let 
let's just make that bold custom brown architects and go back to the move tool and set that there now we want to change that to the blue there so that's set to blue Bit old, it's a bit hard, bit hard to get hold of the text there. Set that, all of that. Sorry, I didn't want all of that blue. There we go. Now back here to the move tool. Select there. Now we've got it all correct and it's laid out fairly nicely. Now all we've got to do is put the logo in there. So go to file in this case, file place and use the KBA logos KBA logos AF design we want the KBA logo blue and green so we open that just takes a moment to op open it that's all right gives you plenty of time to look around Probably not quite this much time, but there we go. Now we're going to put this down that line there. You can see the green line, and it's in that block there. So hold the command key down and bring that out like that. But we want to select the artboards that are in this file. We want the artboard called blue, logo blue and green. Logo blue, 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 KBA logo blue and green. Enter. There we go. Now, holding the command key down, we've got to bring that out so it's about the same size. Well, so that it is actually. We bring it down there. Hold the command or control key down because we want it exactly the, the right size. There we go. Now it's on that bounding line. It's proportionally the same. Nothing's moved. Except that it's not in line with the edge of... Now it is. See the green line? There we go. Now I've brought that up so it's four points above that. And we want this a multiple of 14, 15, 15.4, hmm, 16.5. I might have to turn snapping off if I can. No, I can't see them. I can't see the measurements of snappings off. 14, 16.5. Let's make the Y here. Take that off. Zero. There we go. Now the bottom of that is too low. But that's what we want. That's what I want here. So that it's right in the right place. With complements, and it's on the centre bar, KBA, Costner Brown, ARCHI. Try putting a T in there instead of a V, an F. Architects, and there it is. Now, save the file, file, save, and that's the complement slip. Now, all we've got to do is print them out, and you do that by exporting to a PDF.
CMYK document setup for all three stationary deliverables makes it easy to export as press ready PDFs to hand off to your print company. This project focused on two main aspects of all three deliverables simple design and maintaining the brand, and that's what we've done. Thanks for watching. If nothing else, this has been something of an experiment in using live recording again. I haven't done live recording for a while, as you can probably tell, but that's all there is to it. Thanks for watching.